Trapcast Express. Trapcast Express. It's Wednesday, June seventh, twenty seventeen, folks. We have a new heresy from Francis. Uh, not that it's a new heresy per se. We've just never heard it before from him. In his general audience catechesis today, Francis spoke about the fatherhood of God and said this, quote, We can be far, hostile. We can even say we are without God. But Jesus Christ's gospel reveals to us that God cannot be without us. It is he who cannot be without us. And this is a great mystery, unquote. Yeah, great mystery, my eye. It's heresy. To say that God needs creatures is to say that God created out of necessity, and this is something explicitly condemned by the Church. For example, the First Vatican Council declared as follows, quote, This sole true God, by his goodness and omnipotent power, not to increase his own beatitude, and not to add to, but to manifest his perfection by the blessings which he bestows on creatures, with most free volition, immediately from the beginning of time, fashioned each creature out of nothing. Unquote. And that's Denzinger 1783. So Francis has added yet another heresy to his ever growing list. Well, what's one more heresy at this point? I mean, might as well. Although, mark my words, you probably won't hear anything about this from Cardinal Raymond Burke or Bishop Athanasius Schneider or any of the other supposed heroes of orthodoxy in the conciliar cult, because it's not about, you know, impurity. It's not about matters related to the sixth or ninth commandments. And so it's not sensational enough. It's just too academic. So don't expect to see any petitions, open letters, or anything of the kind from the remnant or Araticelli or whatever. Heresy like this is small potatoes for them. Anyway, we've got a few more interesting developments today, and we'll get to those in a minute. But in the meantime, let me just say that we just posted a fundraising update on our blog today, novosordowatch.org slash wire. And we have terrific new thank you gifts for all who make a qualifying tax-deductible donation in the month of June. And these gifts are the following. Papacy and Freemasonry, a little booklet that contains a speech given by Monsignor Jouin on December 8th, 1930, outlining how Freemasonry seeks to destroy the Catholic Church and how the popes have warned against and refuted the errors of Masonry. So um, this is perfect to give to someone who thinks that the persecution of the church is all just a, a bunch of conspiracy bunk. Uh, then we have Pope Honorius before the Tribunal of Reason and History by Fa Father Paul Botella. Uh, this book was published on the eve of the First Vatican Council in direct response to a book called The Condemnation of Pope Honorius, which was making the rounds at the time. Now, obviously, this whole issue is once again being brought up by many recognized and resistors who use it to defend the idea that Francis can be a Catholic pope without being a Catholic. Uh, but this book sets the record straight on the facts about Pope Honorius I. Then we have Father Connell Answers Moral Questions. This is a book that contains questions and answers on a great number of of important moral issues that were raised in the, I'm guessing, in the 40s and 50s. And uh, they were answered by Father Francis Connell, if I'm not mistaken, mostly in the American Ecclesiastical Review. Um, Father Connell was one of the leading moral theologians of the time and was a close associate of uh, Monsignor Joseph Clifford Fenton, the great anti-modernist American theologian. Uh, then we also have Tumultuous Times by Fathers Francisco and Dominic Radecki. Tumultuous Times is a very readable book on church history that focuses on all 20 ecumenical councils and also on Vatican II and its aftermath, including an examination of the new sacraments, the new sacramental rites of the Novus Ordo Church, 
how these were changed and in many cases rendered invalid or doubtful. This book was uh, first published in 2004, and uh, so it does not cover Benedict XVI or Francis. And finally, we also offer the great commentary of Cornelius Alapide on the Four Gospels, a four-volume, absolutely priceless work explaining the Gospels. Because you don't just want to read the Gospels, right? You actually want to understand them. So this is a great way to do that. You can get all the details on these books I just mentioned if you go to novosordowatch.org slash donate and click on the link for the donor rewards. All right, back to business now. Francis has released his message for World Mission Sunday, which falls on October 22nd this year. And Francis being Francis, he made clear, of course, that if there's one thing World Mission Sunday has nothing to do with, it's mission, at least not in the sense that the Catholic Church understands the term. And so he said, quote, the church's mission is not to spread a religious ideology, much less to propose a lofty ethical teaching, unquote. Could have fooled me. <laughs> then Novos Ordo columnist John Allen reports that Francis might remove Cardinal Gerhard Ludwig Müller this summer, since he's obviously not heretical enough for him, and he might replace. Well, he didn't say that, but you know, <laughs> and he might replace him with Smoochy, the uh, so-called Archbishop Victor Fernandez of Argentina. That's the guy who wrote that book on the art of kissing back in 1995, and he already ghostwrites many of Francis's documents, including Amoris Letizia. And that's why we've called him the Jorge Whisperer here in the past. And lastly, the English Diocese of Hallam has published guidelines on its website about how to properly venerate pagan idols. I'm not kidding. You can't make the stuff up. According to a post published at lifesitenews.com on June 6th, quote, the Catholic Diocese of Hallam, run by Bishop Rolf Heskett, encourages Catholics to bring flowers to Buddha, bow to the Hindu Murtis, image of the deities, and bow to the Sikh holy book. Catholics are also encouraged to eat the food offered to them that has been blessed in Hindu and Sikh rituals. Unquote. Now, by the way, the chap who authorized this, this Mr. Heskett, was first appointed bishop by, want to take a guess? Benedict XVI, of course, back in 2010. Well, what you see here, folks, is simply the next step of interreligious dialogue. It's true, of course, that back at the time of Moses, God enjoined in his first commandment, Thou shalt have no strange gods before me, but thanks to Amoris Laetitia, we now know that this is not really a commandment at all, but more like a, a really good suggestion, you know, just an ideal for heroes that you should strive for, perhaps, but that only heroes will really ever attain, and who's going to be a hero? Yeah, sure, there were the three young men who would rather go into the fiery furnace than to bow to the statue that the pagan king demanded they worship, and there have been countless Catholic martyrs who underwent the most cruel tortures rather than offer a single grain of incense to a false god, but as we all know, that was before Vatican II. <coughs> Tratcast Express is a production of Novus Ordo Watch. Check us out at tradcast.org, and if you like what we're doing, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution at novosordowatch.org slash donate.